Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. God loves you. God wants to bless you and prosper you, but you have to respond in faith. I was able to take that, believing it, and move ahead and operate in giving, believing for a harvest and getting harvest every time. Once I did that, I made more money than ever. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on financial stewardship. I'm now in the middle of my third week, and I tell you, we are covering some powerful, powerful things. Let me just once again mention that in the U.S., this is our national Thanksgiving holiday. I know that this program goes all around the world, but you know, I've got friends in England, in Hungary, uh, Germany, Holland, South Africa, all over the world that they also observe Thanksgiving the way that we do here in the U.S. because I really believe that this is probably the most godly holiday that we have. I mean, the point of just giving thanks to God for what He's done for us, that is one of the most godly things that you can possibly do. And it also is a powerful thing because it refocuses your attention away from all of the negative things that are happening. And there's plenty of those. And it makes us just focus on the good things. God has been good to every one of us. And man, we need to be thankful for things. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to preach on that, but I just wanted to say that, man, I really enjoy this Thanksgiving holiday, and I encourage you to spend some time just giving thanks for all that God has done for us. And some of you may think, well, I'm facing sickness, but you know, you ought to thank God that, man, He's provided healing, and even if for some reason you didn't receive healing, you're going to go immediately into the presence of the Lord. You've got a mansion. Yet streets that are paved of gold. There'll be no more sorrow, no more crying, no more tears. I mean, you can praise God if you're facing death. If you're facing financial problems, just think about that someday in heaven, you're going to have this mansion and, and every need supplied. Uh, and on and on it goes. There is always something that you can be praising God for. Again, I've been teaching on financial stewardship. Let me remind you that I'm making this as a gift to you, lest somebody think that I'm teaching on this just for selfish uh, reasons. We're making this book an absolute gift to you, or you could get the DVDs or the CDs as a gift. Now, we've got a package deal, and we are asking for a certain amount on that, but you can get the book or the CDs or DVDs absolutely free by asking for them. This week, I've been teaching from Luke chapter 16, and this is a teaching that Jesus gave about a man who was a steward, and he had wasted his master's goods. Goods. His master heard about it, and his master said, you put these books in order. You bring them to me. I'm going to look at them, and if what I've heard is true, then I'm going to fire you. And the man admitted that he was guilty. He says, I'm going to lose my job. He says, I cannot dig to beg. I'm ashamed. On Monday, I spent quite a bit of time on that Luke 16, 3, uh, talking about the attitude that this man had. People who steal money, people who are struggling financially, it is an attitude that causes this. And I hadn't got time to go back and reteach that, but that is so powerful. Most people think, oh no, it's because of the color of my skin or my lack of education or my gender, or they come up with all of these things. You can find people that, you know, they have broken through the color barrier. They've broken through the education barrier. They've broken through the gender barrier. There are people that prosper. I mean, supernaturally prosper in every one of these things. There are no barriers except the barriers that you have in your mind. And this man, by the fact that he said, I cannot dig, which probably meant that he would not dig. He was too lazy to dig. And the fact that he was ashamed to beg, those things revealed a lot about this man. And that's the reason that he was an unjust steward. But when he was confronted with losing his job, he finally did something good. And what he did was steal, steal money from his master, but he started giving it to all the people who owed his master's money. One person owed a hundred measures of oil, and he said, I'm going to discount it to 50. Sign this new agreement. And he gave him a 50% discount. Another person owed a hundred measures of wheat, and he said, I'm going to discount it to 80. 
And so he gave him a 20% discount. We don't know exactly how much money that was, but it could have been tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars that he still stole from his master, but he gave it to other people. And here was the logic that he was going to be fired. And when he got fired, he could go to those people and say, do you remember that I discounted your bill 50%? I discounted your bill 20%, 10%. Would you help me? And these people would feel obligated. And so he was still stealing money from his master, but instead of putting it into his pocket, he was giving it to other people. And here's what I spent a lot of time on yesterday is in verse 8. The master's reaction to this unjust steward is amazing. And what I talked about yesterday was that this master actually found something to compliment the unjust steward over. And so there's two things I want to bring out of this verse. The first one is what I talked about all yesterday, that this shows that the master was not trusting in his money, not trusting in his assets, because when he saw this servant, stealing his assets and giving it away to other people. He didn't get incensed. He didn't get mad. He actually complimented the servant. That shows a detachment from that money, that that money didn't control him. It didn't dominate him. I'm telling you, I spent a lot of time on this yesterday. I could spend multiple days on this because this is where a lot of people are losing it in the area of finances is because their trust is in the money. Their trust is in the job instead of being in God. When your trust is in God and you see the job that you have, not as your source, but just a channel that God is using. God is using this job. Well, then you aren't going to sit there and compromise. I'm going to say some things here that will probably get me in trouble, but uh, anyway, I believe it's true. I believe it needs to be said. But, you know, we've had in the last few years this, um, I forgot what they call it. They, they name these movements and they put names to it. But we have these women coming out and accusing people that he sexually assaulted me. He molested me. He did these things. And they say it's been 20 years, 30 years. And the, one of the questions that always comes up, well, then why didn't you say something? And they will just say, I would have lost my job. I wouldn't have been able to be advanced. I'M NOT SAYING THAT THE SEXUAL ASSAULT AND THE SEXUAL ABUSE IS GOOD. NO, I THINK THAT PEOKLE WHO SEXUALLY ABUSE SOMEBODY ELSE, MAN, NUKE THEM TILL THEY GLOW AND SHOOT THEM IN THE DARK. (laughs) I'M JUST KIDDING. I'LL GET SOMEBODY CRITICIZING ME OVER THAT. BUT ANYWAY, I'M JUST SAYING THAT I'M NOT uh, DISMISSING THINGS. IF PEOPLE SEXUALLY ABUSE SOMEBODY, THEY OUGHT TO PAY FOR IT. BUT I AM SAYING THAT FOR A PERSON TO SIT THERE AND GO AHEAD AND HAVE SEXUAL RELATIONS, ALLOW A PERSON TO ABUSE THEM, TO HARASS THEM, TO DO THINGS TO THEM THAT ARE INAPPROPRIATE, AND YET THEY DO IT BECAUSE THEY WOULD HAVE LOST THEIR JOB. THEIR CAREER WOULD HAVE BEEN AFFECTED. THAT IS NOT THE RIGHT ATTITUDE. THAT IS CONTRA. YOU ARE LOOKING AT THAT PERSON, THAT JOB AS YOUR SOURCE INSTEAD OF LOOKING AT GOD. NOW, IN A SENSE, I CAN DISMISS THIS FOR PEOPLE THAT DON'T KNOW THE LORD. BUT IF YOU ARE A BELIEVER, THERE SHOULD BE NOTHING THAT WOULD MAKE YOU COMPROMISE YOUR CONVICTIONS. IF YOU ARE WORKING AT A JOB AND SOMEBODY SAYS, UNLESS YOU HAVE SEX WITH ME, I'M NOT GOING TO ADVANCE YOU. I'M, I'm GOING TO FIRE YOU OR SOMETHING. AND IF YOU GO AHEAD AND, uh, and SUBMIT TO THAT BECAUSE you, YOUR JOB IS DEPENDENT UPON IT, IN A SENSE, YOU'RE A PROSTITUTE. YOU ARE PROSTITUTING YOURSELF. YOU ARE GETTING PAY IN EXCHANGE FOR SEX. THAT'S WRONG, <laughs> MAN. AGAIN, I KNOW THAT, MAN, I'LL GET CRITICIZED OVER THIS, BUT I BELIEVE THAT THAT'S TRUE. THERE IS... I DON'T LOOK AT ANYTHING AS MY SOURCE. I had a man come to me one time and he was going to give me a million dollars. And man, this is, this has been 20 something years ago. I needed a million dollars. It would have been huge, but he put stipulations on it. You're going to have to take one month off. And I, before, for you to get this money, you've got to take one month off. You got to give me your personal phone number. You've got to give me access to you that I can call you at any time. You got to let me speak into your life. And if you will do these things, I'll give you a million dollars. Well, you know what? I could have used a million dollars, but that man's not my source. And I turned him down and I said, no, there's no strings attached. If you want to give, then you give, but you aren't going to buy me and I'm not beholden to you. And I've had this same thing happen. I've actually quit jobs before. I remember when the Lord first touched my life, 
THEN I WAS A COLLEGE DROPOUT. THE LORD TOLD ME TO DROP OUT OF SCHOOL. I DID. I GOT DRAFTED. I GOT SENT TO VIETNAM. AND WHEN I CAME BACK, I GOT A JOB WORKING FOR THE SCHOOL SYSTEM. AND MY BOSS LIKED ME SO MUCH, HE GAVE ME A JOB THAT HAD GUARANTEED RETIREMENT ON IT. THIS IS WHEN I WAS LIKE, I DON'T KNOW, I WAS ONLY 22 YEARS OLD OR SOMETHING. AND HE WAS ALREADY TALKING ABOUT RETIREMENT AND AUTOMATIC COST OF LIVING uh, RAISES AND STUFF WORKING FOR THE GOVERNMENT. AND IT WAS A CUSH JOB. AND HE OFFERED ALL OF THESE THINGS TO ME. BUT I HAD TO GUARANTEE HIM A MINIMUM OF FIVE YEARS WORKING FOR HIM. AND I KNEW THAT GOD HAD CALLED ME INTO THE MINISTRY. I WASN'T IN THE MINISTRY AT THAT TIME, BUT I KNEW THAT THAT'S WHERE I WAS HEADED, AND I WASN'T GOING TO SIT THERE AND OBLIGATE MYSELF TO SOMETHING AND KEEP ME FROM BEING RESPONSIVE TO THE LORD, AND I TURNED HIM DOWN, AND I QUIT THE JOB, AND I WALKED AWAY FROM IT BECAUSE THAT JOB WASN'T MY SOURCE. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, EVERYBODY AROUND ME TOLD ME, YOU'RE CRAZY. YOU'LL NEVER GET ANOTHER OPPORTUNITY LIKE THIS. I LOOK BACK AT IT NOW, AND WHAT I'VE GOT AND WHAT GOD HAS DONE IN MY LIFE IS A THOUSAND TIMES GREATER THAN WHAT THAT JOB WORKING FOR THE SCHOOL SYSTEM WOULD HAVE BEEN. SEE, GOD'S NOT... GOD IS MY SOURCE, NOT THAT JOB. AND WHEN YOU GET THIS ATTITUDE, IT CHANGES EVERYTHING. AND YOU CAN ACTUALLY SEE IF SOMEBODY COMES AND STEALS FROM YOU OR DOES SOMETHING LIKE THIS uh, RICH MAN HERE, YOU CAN ACTUALLY BE SO DETACHED FROM YOUR MONEY THAT YOU JUST SIT THERE AND YOU FIND SOMETHING TO FINALLY COMPLIMENT THIS GUY OVER. ANYWAY, I COULD TALK ABOUT THAT FOR ANOTHER DAY OR TWO, BUT LET ME GO TO THE SECOND THING HERE IN LUKE CHAPTER 16 AND IN VERSE 8. NOT ONLY DID THE RICH MAN COMPLIMENT THE THIEF, THE UNJUST STEWARD, BUT WHY DID HE COMPLIMENT HIM? WHAT, what WAS THE MAN DOING THAT WAS WORTH A COMPLIMENT? AND THIS IS REALLY IMPORTANT THAT YOU GET THIS. THIS MAN, PRIOR TO THE MASTER COMING TO HIM AND, AND CONFRONTING HIM AND SAYING, IF YOU'RE GUILTY, I'M GOING TO FIRE YOU. PRIOR TO THIS TIME, THIS MAN HAD MISUSED HIS RESOURCES. HE HAD STOLEN MONEY FROM THE MASTER, BUT HE DIDN'T HAVE ANYTHING TO SHOW FOR IT. HE HAD SPENT IT ON THINGS THAT ARE TEMPORARY. LIKE HE, YOU KNOW, TODAY WE WOULD SAY HE BOUGHT TVS, DVDs, HE BOUGHT THE FANCIEST PHONE, HE BOUGHT THE FANCIEST FOOD, THE NICEST CLOTHES, AND ALL OF THESE KIND OF THINGS. BUT YOU CAN'T EAT THOSE THINGS. YOU CAN'T LIVE OFF OF THAT. HE DIDN'T HAVE ANY INVESTMENTS. HE HADN'T TAKEN THIS MONEY AND THOUGHT ABOUT THE FUTURE. HE WAS JUST SPENDING IT ON TEMPORARY THINGS, AND WHEN HE LOST HIS JOB, HE WAS GOING TO BE TOTALLY uh, AT A LOSS FOR INCOME. BUT WHEN HE WAS CONFRONTED WITH LOSING HIS JOB, FINALLY HE BEGAN TO RECOGNIZE THE POWER THAT IS IN MONEY TO AFFECT THE FUTURE. AND INSTEAD OF JUST STEALING MONEY FROM HIS MASTER AND, and BUYING THINGS THAT, YOU KNOW, DON'T LAST, THINGS THAT ARE JUST TEMPORARY, HE BEGAN TO START TAKING THAT MONEY. AND HE WAS STILL STEALING MONEY FROM HIS MASTER, BUT NOW INSTEAD OF PUTTING IT IN HIS POCKET, HE WAS PUTTING IT IN THE POCKET OF OTHER PEOPLE WITH THE LOGIC MEAN THAT WHEN HE WAS FIRED, HE'D BE ABLE TO GO AND SAY, DON'T YOU REMEMBER THAT I DISCOUNTED YOUR BILL? YOU OWE ME THIS. CAN I STAY WITH YOU? WOULD YOU FEED ME FOR A WHILE? HE BEGAN TO START USING HIS POSITION AND THE MONEY THAT HE HAD ACCESS TO IN HIS POSITION TO THINK ABOUT HIS FUTURE AND PLAN FOR HIS FUTURE. AND THAT'S WHAT THIS MASTER COMMENDED HIM FOR. HE HAD ACCESS. AGAIN, WE DON'T KNOW THE EXACT uh, NET WORTH OF THIS MASTER, BUT LET'S JUST SAY THAT HE WAS MULTIMILLIONAIRE. HE HAD MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF DOLLARS THAT THIS MAN HAD ACCESS TO, AND HE WAS STEALING SOME OF IT, BUT HE WAS JUST USING IT FOR TEMPORARY THINGS, JUST BUYING THINGS THAT WOULDN'T AFFECT HIS FUTURE. AND THE MOMENT HE GOT FIRED, HE HAD NOTHING. BUT FINALLY, HE HAD STARTED USING THAT MONEY. HE RECOGNIZED THE POWER THAT WAS IN THAT MONEY TO AFFECT HIS FUTURE, AND HE STARTED USING MONEY TO AFFECT HIS FUTURE. AND THAT'S THE REASON THAT THIS MAN SAID THAT THE, uh, the UNBELIEVERS ARE A GREATER STEWARD OF THEIR MONEY. LET ME JUST READ THIS TO YOU IN VERSE 8. AND THE LORD COMMENDED THE UNJUST STEWARD BECAUSE HE HAD DONE WISELY FOR THE CHILDREN OF THIS WORLD ARE IN THEIR GENERATION WISER THAN THE CHILDREN OF LIGHT. PEOPLE THAT DON'T KNOW THE LORD, THEY ONLY THINK ABOUT THIS LIFE. 
THEY AREN'T THINKING ABOUT HEAVEN AND HELL. IF THEY WERE, THEY'D COME TO KNOW THE LORD. THEY WOULD MAKE PEACE WITH HIM AND GUARANTEE THAT WHEN THEY DIE, THEY WERE GOING TO GO TO BE WITH THE LORD. BUT THE VAST MAJORITY OF PEOPLE THAT AREN'T BORN AGAIN, THEY AREN'T THINKING ABOUT HEAVEN AND HELL. THEY'RE JUST FOCUSED ON THIS LIFE. THAT'S ALL THAT THEY'RE... THAT'S ALL THAT'S IN THEIR VIEW. AND BECAUSE OF IT, THEY ACTUALLY PLAN FOR THE FUTURE. THEY ACTUALLY PLAN FOR THEIR RETIREMENT BETTER THAN MOST CHRISTIANS DO. WE'VE GOT A WHOLE GROUP OF CHRISTIANS TODAY THAT BELIEVE THAT WE'RE JUST GOING TO BE RAPTURED OUT OF HERE AND THAT WE'RE GOING TO AVOID ALL PROBLEMS AND THEY'RE JUST LOOKING FOR THE LORD TO COME AND TAKE THEM AWAY. AND SO THEY'RE IN A HOCK UP TO THEIR EARS THINKING THEY'LL LEAVE ALL OF THEIR DEBT FOR THE ANTICHRIST. WE GOT A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT ARE THINKING ABOUT HEAVEN SO MUCH THAT they, they THEIR FOCUS ISN'T LIMITED TO THIS WORLD. THEY'RE THINKING ABOUT HEAVEN. ANYWAY, CHRISTIANS TEND NOT TO PLAN FOR THE FUTURE AS WELL AS PEOPLE THAT DON'T KNOW THE LORD AND ONLY HAVE THIS LIFE TO FOCUS ON. THEY MANY TIMES ARE BETTER STEWARDS PLANNING FOR THE FUTURE, USING MONEY TO PLAN FOR THE FUTURE THAN BELIEVERS ARE. AND THE REASON THAT THIS MASTER COMPLIMENTED THIS MAN IS BECAUSE HE FINALLY STARTED USING MONEY TO AFFECT HIS FUTURE. DID YOU KNOW THAT THERE IS POWER IN MONEY. THERE'S A LOT OF CHRISTIANS THAT WILL BE OFFENDED BY ME SAYING THAT BECAUSE THEY MISUSE SCRIPTURES. I'M GOING TO DEAL WITH THESE SCRIPTURES LATER IN 1ST TIMOTHY CHAPTER 6 ABOUT THE LOVE OF MONEY IS THE ROOT OF ALL EVIL. IT USES THE TERM FILTHY LUCRE IN THE KING JAMES TO REFER TO MONEY AND THEY JUST HAVE THIS ATTITUDE THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER uh, MONEY IS NECESSARY BUT IT'S A NECESSARY EVIL AND THEY, they are, TAKE OFFENSE WHEN YOU SAY THAT p- MONEY GIVES YOU POWER IT GIVES YOU ABILITY. IT GIVES YOU INFLUENCE. AND THEY they RESIST THINGS LIKE THAT. BUT IT'S TRUE. DID YOU KNOW I CAN DO THINGS TODAY BECAUSE OF THE CASH FLOW THAT WE HAVE. WE HAVE TO HAVE OVER $5 MILLION PER MONTH JUST TO PAY OUR BILLS, AND WE NEED MUCH MORE THAN THAT. AND THAT'S ONLY IN THE U.S. I'VE GOT 16 OFFICES SCATTERED AROUND THE WORLD. AND SO ANYWAY, I'VE GOT MONEY FLOWING THROUGH ME. AND BECAUSE OF THIS, THERE'S THINGS THAT I CAN DO TODAY THAT I COULDN'T HAVE EVEN DREAMED ABOUT DOING BACK 20 YEARS AGO OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT. MONEY GIVES YOU POWER. IT GIVES YOU INFLUENCE. IT GIVES YOU OPTIONS. AND WE NEED TO USE THAT POWER, THAT ABILITY THAT MONEY GIVES US TO AFFECT OUR FUTURE. AND YET THE MINDSET OF MOST PEOPLE TODAY IS VERY TEMPORARY. DID YOU KNOW WHEN YOU GO AND BUY SOMETHING ON CREDIT, YOU'RE GOING TO WIND UP PAYING FOR THAT THING AT LEAST TWICE WHAT IT'S WORTH, SOMETIMES THREE TIMES WHAT IT'S WORTH. I REMEMBER THE FIRST TIME I EVER BOUGHT A HOUSE AND THEY SAT DOWN AND YOU HAVE TO HAVE THESE DISCLOSURES TO SHOW WHAT THE ACTUAL TOTAL AMOUNT IS GOING TO BE ONCE YOU PAY ALL OF THE INTEREST FOR 30 YEARS. AND I WAS JUST ABSOLUTELY SHOCKED. I MEAN, IT WAS PAYING FOR THAT HOUSE MORE THAN TWICE WHAT IT WAS WORTH. SEE, THAT'S TEMPORARY THINKING. PEOPLE THINK, BUT I NEED IT NOW. I'M GOING TO GO GET ME A FANCY HOUSE, A FANCY CAR NOW. AND THEY they DON'T LOOK AT WHAT THE TOTAL PRICE IS. THEY LOOK AT WHAT THE MONTHLY PAYMENT IS. HOW MUCH CAN I AFFORD PER MONTH? AND THEY MORTGAGE THEIR FUTURE. AND THEY WIND UP PAYING TWO AND THREE TIMES WHAT SOMETHING IS WORTH. AND THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM THAT YOU THINK, WELL, HOW ELSE CAN YOU DO IT? DID YOU KNOW INSTEAD OF GOING AND BUYING A fifty, sixty thousand dollars CAR THAT HAS ALL THE BELLS AND WHISTLES ON IT, GO GET A USED CAR AND TAKE THE MONEY THAT YOU WOULD HAVE BEEN MAKING ON PAYMENTS FOR THIS fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars CAR AND INSTEAD JUST PUT THAT MONEY IN SAVINGS, LET IT GET SOME INTEREST. AND DID YOU KNOW IN JUST A YEAR OR TWO OR THREE, YOU'LL BE ABLE TO GO BUY A CAR DEBT FREE AND AVOID ALL OF THAT INTEREST. AND WITH THE HOUSE, YOU CAN BUY A HOUSE AND YOU CAN START MAKING MULTIPLE PAYMENTS. MY WIFE AND I PAID OFF OUR HOUSE, I THINK, IN 15 YEARS INSTEAD OF THE 30 YEARS. WE MADE MULTIPLE PAYMENTS AND WE SAVED HUNDREDS, OR or I DON'T KNOW HOW MUCH, PROBABLY $100,000 IN INTEREST ON THAT uh, HOUSE. ANYWAY, WE NEED TO GET TO WHERE WE START THINKING ABOUT THE FUTURE AND NOT JUST THINKING, WHAT CAN I GET NOW? PEOPLE WILL TELL YOU, GO BUY THIS FURNITURE, NO PAYMENTS FOR 90 DAYS AND NO INTEREST FOR FIVE YEARS OR WHATEVER IT IS. AND PEOPLE JUST THINK, MAN, I CAN GET IT ALL NOW. BUT I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, YOU ARE GOING TO WIND UP PAYING MORE DOING THINGS THAT WAY. MOST PEOPLE ARE VERY TEMPORARY MINDED. THEY AREN'T THINKING ABOUT THE FUTURE. THEY PUT THEMSELVES UNDER THE GUN SO THAT IF WE DO HAVE A VIRUS AND IF THEY DO SHUT DOWN THE ECONOMY AND IF YOU DO GET LAID OFF, THAT, MAN, YOU ARE JUST... 
YOU ARE RIGHT ON THE EDGE OF FINANCIAL DISASTER ALL OF THE TIME. IT WOULD BE BETTER TO CUT BACK, TO LIVE WITH LESS AND BUILD UP AND PAY CASH SO THAT IF SOMETHING HAPPENS, YOU AREN'T IN uh, JEOPARDY. YOU AREN'T... YOU AREN'T DESPERATE THE WAY THAT WE SEE SO MANY PEOPLE BEING TODAY. BUT SEE, THAT'S SHORT-TERM THINKING. THIS MAN FINALLY, HE WAS FORCED TO START THINKING ABOUT, ALL RIGHT, HOW CAN I USE THIS POSITION, THIS MONEY THAT IS UNDER MY CONTROL? HOW CAN I USE THIS TO START AFFECTING MY FUTURE? AND LOOK AT THE INTERPRETATION IN VERSE 9. THIS IS JESUS GIVING THE INTERPRETATION. AND HE SAYS, I SAY UNTO YOU, MAKE TO YOURSELVES FRIENDS OF THE MAMMON OF UNRIGHTEOUSNESS THAT WHEN YOU FAIL, THEY MAY RECEIVE YOU INTO EVERLASTING HABITATIONS. AND THE KING JAMES HERE, THIS IS AWKWARD. THE MAMMON OF UNRIGHTEOUSNESS IS JUST THE OLD KING JAMES WAY OF REFERRING TO MONEY. USE MONEY TO MAKE FRIENDS SO THAT WHEN YOU FAIL, AND THIS WORD FAIL LITERALLY MEANS TO DIE. IT'S TALKING ABOUT WHEN YOU DIE THAT THEY MAY RECEIVE YOU INTO EVERLASTING HABITATIONS. IN OTHER WORDS, THIS STEWARD WAS FORCED TO START USING MONEY TO AFFECT HIS FUTURE, AND THE MASTER COMMENDED HIM FOR THAT. NOW, JESUS IS SAYING THAT LIKEWISE, YOU NEED TO RECOGNIZE THAT MONEY GIVES YOU POWER, INFLUENCE FOR THE FUTURE, NOT ONLY THE FUTURE IN THIS LIFE, BUT IN ETERNITY, THAT WHEN YOU DIE, PEOPLE WILL BE THERE TO WELCOME YOU INTO EVERLASTING HABITATIONS. SO HERE'S THE PICTURE. JESUS IS SAYING, DON'T USE MONEY JUST FOR THINGS IN THIS LIFE. YOU CAN USE MONEY TO AFFECT ETERNITY. YOU CAN'T TAKE MONEY WITH YOU. YOU CAN'T... Uh, YOU KNOW, YOU'LL NEVER SEE A HEARSE PULLING A U-HAUL. WHEN YOU DIE, YOU'RE JUST GOING TO BE LEAVING AND LEAVING ALL OF YOUR ASSETS HERE. I DON'T CARE IF YOU'VE GOT GOLD, SILVER, PRECIOUS STONES, IF YOU'VE GOT STEEL BUILDINGS. YOU AREN'T TAKING ANY OF THAT WITH YOU, BUT YOU CAN SEND IT AHEAD. HOW DO YOU DO THAT? BY LAYING UP TREASURE IN HEAVEN, BY GIVING AND TOUCHING PEOPLE'S LIVES, BY SEEING PEOPLE CHANGE, BORN AGAIN, AND THEN WHEN YOU GET TO HEAVEN, YOU LITERALLY WILL HAVE PEOPLE LINED UP TO WELCOME YOU INTO HEAVEN. THAT'S WHAT JESUS IS SAYING. THIS IS NOT JUST SYMBOLIC. THIS IS ACTUAL. I BELIEVE THAT WHEN YOU DIE AND YOU GO TO HEAVEN, THAT THE PEOPLE THAT YOU HAVE USED YOUR RESOURCES TO INFLUENCE AND TO TOUCH THEIR LIVES FOR GOOD, TO BRING THEM INTO RELATIONSHIP WITH THE LORD, THOSE PEOPLE ARE GOING TO BE LINED UP INTO HEAVEN AND THEY ARE GOING TO WELCOME YOU INTO HEAVEN. YOU ARE GOING TO HAVE A WELCOMING COMMITTEE OF PEOPLE'S LIVES THAT YOU'VE TOUCHED. AND THEY MAY BE PEOPLE THAT YOU NEVER MET. WHEN YOU GIVE TO A MINISTRY, WHEN YOU GIVE TO A CHURCH, WHEN YOU GIVE TO A MISSIONS ORGANIZATION AND STUFF, YOU WILL... THOSE PEOPLE WILL GO OUT AND THEY'LL SEE LIVES TOUCHED, PEOPLE HEALED, BORN AGAIN, BAPTIZED IN THE HOLY SPIRIT. YOU MAY HAVE NEVER MET THOSE PEOPLE YOURSELF, BUT WHEN YOU GET TO HEAVEN, THEY WILL BE THERE TO WELCOME YOU INTO HEAVEN BECAUSE YOU INVESTED YOUR MONEY IN THAT. AND THAT IS THE PURPOSE OF THIS WHOLE PARABLE. THE LORD IS SAYING, DON'T USE MONEY JUST TO GET AS MUCH AS YOU CAN, CAN ALL YOU GET, SIT ON YOUR CAN, BUT RECOGNIZE GOD HAS GIVEN YOU POWER, INFLUENCE, SO THAT YOU CAN TOUCH PEOPLE'S LIVES AND EFFECT ETERNITY. MAN, THAT'S AWESOME. YOU SAY IN THE NAME OF JESUS, I'M NOT GOING BY WHAT I SEE. I GO BY WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS. THERE'S MORE THAN JUST THIS PHYSICAL REALM. THERE'S ALSO A SPIRITUAL REALM. I DON'T CARE WHAT THIS LOOKS LIKE. I KNOW WHAT GOD'S WORD SAYS. THE DOCTORS TOLD ME IT WOULD BE A YEAR BEFORE I WOULD WALK NORMAL. I WAS BEING KILLED BY A CANCEROUS TUMOR. I WAS TOLD MY WIFE WOULD NOT LEAVE THE HOSPITAL ALIVE. MY NAME IS TERESA HOTELLING AND I'M FROM WOODLAND PARK, COLORADO. I WAS TOLD THAT I WOULD NEVER RECOVER FROM SJOGREN SYNDROME, LUPUS, OR THYROID DISEASE. FOR YEARS, I HAD TRIED EVERYTHING, MEDICAL TREATMENTS, HOLISTIC TREATMENTS, EVEN LOTS OF PRAYER, SPEAKING AND COMMANDING, BUT NOTHING SEEMED TO WORK. THAT'S WHEN I ENROLLED INTO KARIS BIBLE COLLEGE AND MY FOCUS SHIFTED OFF OF MY SYMPTOMS AND ONTO THE FINISHED WORK OF JESUS. IN JUST A MATTER OF MONTHS, I RECEIVED MY COMPLETE HEALING AFTER SITTING UNDER THE WORD AT KARIS BIBLE COLLEGE. AND TODAY, SEVERAL YEARS LATER, I AM STILL WALKING IN THAT COMPLETE HEALING AND I AM NOT ALONE. I WAS WALKING NORMAL WITHIN A MATTER OF WEEKS AND TODAY I AM IN FULL-TIME MINISTRY. TODAY I AM CANCER FREE AND I'M LIVING LIFE TO THE FULLEST. MY WIFE'S MIRACULOUS RECOVERY SHOCKED ALL THE DOCTORS. BECAUSE PEOPLE LIKE YOU PARTNERED WITH ANDREW WOMACK MINISTRIES, WE HAVE ALL BEEN GIVEN OUR LIVES BACK. 
We cannot thank you enough for your generosity, but there are still millions of people out there who need the same truth that set us free. Won't you please help us get that message to them? Please be a partner with this ministry today. Become a partner today. <laughs> you know, you may not know these people, but I know every one of these people that you just saw them give a testimony. And I tell you, Jesus changed their life because of our partners. If you've not yet joined with us and become a partner, I ask you to pray about it and join with us today. Andrew is offering his complete teaching on financial stewardship in your choice of either a book, CD album, or DVD album as his free gift to you today. Let me remind you once again that I'm giving this book to you as a gift, either the book or the CD set or the DVD set. Any one of these you can get absolutely free by just requesting it. We also have a DVD of testimonies of people that this teaching on prosperity has changed them and they're experiencing this. We have the book in Spanish. We also have study guides in English and in Spanish. And again, I just want to emphasize how important it is for you to begin to start trusting God in this area. This is a key. If you can't do that which is least, you can't do that which is greatest. So please take advantage of this product. It will be a blessing to you. Go to awmi.net to order your free product today. This offer is limited to one free product per household and is only available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. This teaching is also available as a companion study guide for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Or you can get these valuable resources in the Financial Stewardship Package this package includes the Financial Stewardship Book, Study Guide, and your choice of either the CD or DVD album, as well as the Financial Breakthroughs DVD. This DVD includes six testimonies of people that experience the freedom of turning their finances over to God. This package has a catalog value of $115, but you can get it today for only $80. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call our helpline 24 hours a day, five days a week, Monday through Friday at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Andrew has many conferences and seminars around the globe each year. For the latest information on Andrew's complete speaking schedule, visit our website at awmi.net slash events. From the creators of God With Us comes the heart of Christmas, a story like you've never experienced before, a story that takes you around the world and back through time an adventure for you and your entire family to enjoy year after year. As a special offer for the holiday season, Andrew would like to offer you the Heart of Christmas DVD for just $25. Order your copy today at awmi.net.